Welcome inside the Huntsman Center for game two of, uh, of the day here. Dusty yep. Lister and Dane Stewart with you. Our quarterfinal matchup, the Olympus Titans and the Salem Hills Skyhawks. And Dane, for Olympus, this is a team that's the proverbial favorite, the number one overall seed in the 5A tournament. And uh, Coach Barnes looking for another championship. And this team may be a little bit different. He's got the shooters. We're going to talk about the shooters. We've got a Dowdell, too. But it's Wistersill, the difference. And the guy that maybe he hasn't had down the blocks, a dominant number five. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And, and not just a dominant five, Jesse, but the guy that can step out and be a shooter. He's like 35% from long range this year. So it's tough. Do you, do you try to take him away in the block and, and have him beat you with jumpers? Or do you try to come out on him and contest shots and then give up the block? Right. He's got the athleticism to get around you as well. Jack Wistersill, to your point, is what makes this Olympus team different and really dangerous. Well, it certainly does. Not only that, he crossed over the 1,000-point barrier this year, too. So, yeah, man, has done yeah. it for a number of years. It's not just one year that he's done it. Now we talk about Salem Hills. This is a team that's been buried down the south end yeah. of Utah County. They started this year 0-1 in reach of play. They lost to Wasatch from that point. They figured things out, and they've been on an absolute roll. Yeah, region champs. And, Dusty, this is a team that, you know, I think back to the Sky Ridge tournament, right? And they lost some games in that, but they were all close. It was like, this team is is pretty good. You look at a guy like Riker Richards, who leads them in scoring. He can score in so many different ways. This is a lineup that's really versatile. Look, they, they are playing a team that shoots over 40% from long range. Olympus as a team, 41% from three. I, I mean, so look, you really don't have a lot to lose if you're Salem Hills. Go out there, play your best, try to get the upset. I don't think a lot of people expect them to get the upset, and that's when really you're kind of best position right. to do it, right, if you go play your best basketball. And we've seen Region 9 teams come into these tournaments, defeat Olympus, defeat favorites. Salem Hills, the next team to try to do it. Well, the winner will move on and take on Bonneville. And you're, we are set you ready for this? No, this is crazy. This is the first non-region game for Olympus in 2022. They had their region schedule. First two rounds, they had region games. Wow. How about that, huh? Wow. And it comes in the quarterfinal. That is a note. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Olson and Riker Richards jump it. And we will start with Olympus and Coach Matt Barnes and his crew. They've won a state championship on this floor. Matt Barnes, the Olympus graduate. Getting coach's son, Jordy, as they go inside to Wistersill. I almost didn't recognize him with a haircut there, huh? His older brother didn't like to cut, but uh, shots wide to the left. Just working some stuff out as that three wouldn't go. As that ball's loose, picked up. And this is Jordy Barnes. Wistersill outside the future NAU Lumberjack. Barnes passes up the three, goes inside, left hand, crawls home. Wide channel basketball proves right on that one. Nice take there by Jordy Barnes. And again, just showing the versatility of this lineup. He's a youngster as well, just a sophomore, young man that's got a couple more years here in the state. Richards terminate, it's taken away by Barnes. Jordy, and again, nice hustle there by Riker Richards, able to pop that ball out of bounds. It will stay here with the Titans. Jordy Barnes was, you know, we saw him over the summer, the Utah Top 50, a showcase of some of the, you know, top 50 players in the state of Utah this year, and uh, love the defensive steal, and he is uh, looking to be active and aggressive here early. Outside with Lowe. Lowe looking to go inside to Worcester still and does. Nice find of the, the cutting Dowdell, and I'll work it back up top to Barnes. Anthony Olson. Olsen made it really hard on me. I wanted to say Dowdell as soon as he got that ball. The hair, right? I, and the hair. And the number, yeah. <laughs> Wistersill inside, and it's 4 nothing. Olympus. You know, we talk about Wistersill. You mentioned future yeah, NAU Wistersil Lumberjack. He, he also had Idaho in his final two. I was kind of secretly hoping he would give the Vandals a, a much-needed lift, but he uh, elected to go to Flagstaff well, instead. The upset would have been if it would have been non-Big Sky. That would have been the upset. <laughs> Papa Wistersill, of course, we don't know, is the commissioner of the Big Sky Conference. His family moved here from the Dallas, Texas area. The Metroplex, as those of us who love it call it. Man alive. How about a Dowdell leg three there from Luke DeGraffenried? Won't go. And now it's Barnes on the run. Try to lob it inside of Wistersill, and that pass a little too strong. We go back to the Skyhawks.
The tough thing about this Olympus team, Dusty, they get up on you early and they don't let you come back. It's important for Salem Hills to kind of match them stride for stride here early. This is a tough group to come back on uh, in the Olympus Titans. That ball loose, picked up by DeGraff and Reed. He goes cross court to chase DeGraff and Reed for three. Won't drop in the rebound, taken by Olympus. Dowdell for three. Timeout, Salem Hills, Dutch Dowdell, doing what his brother did in a state tournament, knocking down a long range three. But it's just a 30 second timeout and we will stay here. There's a seven nothing start here for Olympus. Yeah, I mean, if you, uh, if you missed it in our uh, bracketology videos that came out on KSL Sports over the weekend, um, you know, Dusty chose Olympus and uh, with, with my bracket now being busted. Thanks a lot, Lakers. Uh, I choose Olympus. I'll, I'll, I'll have a moving target as, uh, as champions get eliminated, hey, right? I mean, as, as Farmington went away and as, as Davis, Davis went right? Away. I mean, you have to adjust to the circumstances and the current circumstances. I'm now, I'm all, all, all tight and triple. So. Yeah, you see right there in our road. <laughs> the road to Provo is uh, Bonneville. One game one on the day. Uh, I'm just waiting for Dusty to start dubbing it the City of Champions because on Saturday it will be the City of Champions. It will be the City of Champions. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> He's mulling that over. <laughs> that might well, land. There's uh, DeGraff and Reed sends back up top. Garrett Scott off on the three, mm -hmm. and it's Mr. Still clearing the board. Dowdell oh, from boy. the same spot. Oof. Rimmed out. And the rebound taken away by Zach Nelson. Loop to Graf and Reed in the lane. Jack knife it up. No. Wistersill pulls down the rebound. Man, just a tough start. I mean, you talk about DeGraff and Reed. They have been good this year and just have not been able to get early looks to drop. Wistersill thought he was a Dowdell, couldn't get it. Rebound goes out of bounds. We'll stay here with Olympus. I mean, the incredible thing is, is even for Olympus, I mean, half these shots are halfway down and <laughs> rattle out. And that's where the wide channel basketball fails them. 41% as a team right. from beyond the arc. <laughs> it's just like. And in the old Olympus gym, you're like, okay, makes sense. The wall's right behind oh, there man. and all kinds of stuff. But the new gym, a little more wide. I guess that wall is still there on both ends. I, I, uh, I'm i going to get this story wrong, but, you know, just for kick's sake. Well, we'll save it for later. We'll save that for later. <laughs> Pin in it. We'll come back. <laughs> to craft and read with the steal. On the other end is Garrett Scott handing back. Luke Butters. And on the drive is Riker Richards. We've got a foul. We'll call it on the floor on the shot. They'll say on the shot, two free throws come the way. As uh, Riker Richards go to the line, fouled by Jordy Barnes. As off the free throw, the board, no call there. Zach Nelson thought he'd get the foul call, did not. On the other end, Dowdell with the blow by to the rim and a finish. How about the aggressiveness there of Dowdell? More than just a three-point shooter. We saw Jeremy develop that late in that push for Olympus to yeah. their state championship. And uh, boy, that time, Dutch with a great drive. Richard sends out Scott for three. A welcome sign for the Skyhawks. They get on the board from deep. Much needed there from Scott. And he is one of their better three-point shooters. They've got others as well that knock it down on a high clip. He's almost uh, 40%, but they needed that. Still by Richards. Oh, a little fancy move. Can't finish. Nice job there by uh, Lowe not picking up the foul on the drive. Of course, we're going to see the Olympus girls a little bit later, Dusty. It'll be a great quarterfinal matchup yep. on the girls' side. Alyssa Blank will be coming as the bucket on the inside there by Anthony Olsen. Just the versatility of the lineup. And I'll tell you, one of the things that just amazed me about Olympus is everybody's got an ego, but the lack of ego. Yeah. It's like no one cares, right? I mean, no one cares if they go for 15 or 20 this game or that game. See, just the versatility of the lineup. 
Landon Butters gets inside for the bucket. So I'm starting to settle down here in this contest. Well, that's the thing about these great Olympus teams is you think of the undefeated team. Nobody cared who scored. They just all wanted to score. Is Worcester Sill? Oh, oh, oh. almost three quarters of the way down. Pops out. Here comes Richards. I mean, it was Creer and Jones and that state championship that were so critical. Had huge games down the stretch. Low spots up for three and knocks it down. And it's a nine point lead once again for Olympus. He's just 50% from beyond the arc. That's Lowe it. Is. That's it. Yep. Richards gets in the lane and scores. And you mentioned Harrison Career. Of course, Harry walked on here at the University of Utah. And in case you're wondering, no school today at Olympus High School. The entire school is here in <laughs> sections W, X, and, and Y. And here's the thing incentivized, and they come back for tonight. Yeah. Come back for tonight and cheer on the girls that one of the two of us picked to win the state championship as Dowdell fouled. And the other one of us picked the other team tonight. So it's a it's a matchup of right. state championship contender. Well, first of all, they're playing against the reigning 5A champion. Yes, they are. Might as well come. And Alyssa Blink has been spectacular. So you might as well get your rear ends back here and watch <laughs> those girls play. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. In fact, just hang out the whole day. Yeah. There's plenty why, of seats here. Why not? <laughs> if you're missing second and fourth period, why not just miss sixth and eighth too? Well, I guess they call A-B as that ball goes out of bounds. And it'll be Salem Hills basketball. And if they ask why, I say, hey, the rewind guy said so. Yeah. We'll write you a pass. It doesn't mean it will mean anything to your administration, but we'll write you one. Hey, and we have some we have some lawyers on our side, too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Justin would love uh. that I set up a thing to go against the school board. <laughs> as the three is on the way and short by the survey. And another three from Olympus. Won't go for Dowdell. As no call on the interior contact. Look, we saw physicality in the first game. How about that? I mean, playing through. As Richards lost the handle, but it goes into the hands of Nelson. And Zach Nelson lays that one in. And I have to believe that Zach Nelson is the younger brother of James Nelson. Wasn't able to confirm that before, but pretty, pretty good feeling that is a family relation. Of course, it would be relations to the Gustins as well. As inside, and there's the lay-in for Anthony Olsen. And how about the pass by the big man, Jack Wistersill? He a lot of that over the top and get a nice finish. Things just come so easy for Olympus. Mm -hmm. As Richards hands back, Messerby's shot blocked away. Three seconds, two, one at the horn. And Anthony Olsen with the bucket. He's not getting the hoop in the harm. He gets the hoop in the finish of the quarter. And it's a nine-point lead for Olympus at the end of one. Titans 18, Skyhawks 9. You're watching the 2022 5A quarterfinals on kslsports.com. Commentary brought to you by Game Night Live Rewind. Start of the second quarter. We'll start with Salem Hills. Dusty Lister and Dane Stewart with you. The three-point ball was put in the air by Salem Hills. Only knocked down one or two. But Dane, still within striking distance if they can get it to drop. Yeah, I mean, that's that's going to be the critical thing. And obviously, shocker, you got to score to win the game, right? Um, unless you're – we won't go into that. I was going to make a reference at to least for, Herm at least Edwards. For, but, at least you know, for one more year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, they've had some good looks against this Olympus team. But how about that, Jack, with a tie-up? I mean, it's just – if you're going to beat Olympus, you got to play your best game of the year, right? And – you can't miss shots. Uh, I mean, I think it took them about five minutes to get in the scoring column today. You just, it's hard to overcome those things against a team that executes at the level that Olympus does, but they're still scrapping, still fighting. Some stops on the defensive end here would, would certainly help. So Wister Seal got the tie up on one and missed the bucket there. Can't get the put back. And that ball's off of Olympus. Go back to Salem Hills and got a little love to Landon Butters. He was a hey, look, look at my arm. You tell me he tied that up cleanly. And, and Exhibit A through Z. And that's one of the things that I think Salem Hills can do in this game. We, we already mentioned this game has been physical. Playoffs typically are. All right, so, so let's muddy this game up, right? Get physical. Try to make Olympus uncomfortable. And I, I know that's hard to do. Jack is a bit of a tank. He's a big kid down there, right? But 
can you body up some of these guards? Can you try to be a little more physical than, than maybe you have been? And, and you certainly don't want to cross the line in that. We don't want flagrants and technicals, but yeah. can, you, can you take advantage of some of that um, to make Olympus uncomfortable in this game and just wear away at them? Outside to Graf and Reed. You got a matchup right now on the block. Leaves it, the little bump. Knocked that shot off. That's out of bounds off of Salem Hills as Jackson Nelson couldn't get that one to drop. I mean, Salem Hills and Payson. I mean, there's names that just run through there. DeGraff and Reeds have been in Payson area forever, and then they moved to Salem Hills as Nelson saves it into Love Nelson. The effort. And then you got the Gustins and Nelsons, and you find out that they're all, that they are family. I mean, I feel like I'm in, and I'd say this lovingly, it's Emery with Jensen's and Stilson's. There's three on the way, won't go. Jackson Nelson could have get it. Ed, how about the hustle? Get on the floor, Seth Messervy. And it's going to be an open three for Richards, and he got it. Way outside. Yeah, I thought it was important for Riker to be able to score consistently, and I love just confidently stepping into that three. We said he can score multiple ways, and he does so there. Open three will not drop from McCain, and now Salem Hills can pull. It's two possession. Yeah, can pull within one with a three, and Richards saves it in to DeGraff and Reed. I really thought Nelson was going to pull the trigger. <laughs> We're going to have a foul on that entry pass to Luke Lowe. I couldn't tell if he wanted to or not, but I think good judgment there by him to not, right? I mean, you're you're in this game. You, you don't have to, you know, yeah. foul it away, right? Like, well, let's get the right shot, the best shot, not settle. It, to reference one of our favorite shows, Seinfeld, you don't need to be a chucker just because you're down and you got some threes rolling. Richard sends back out to Luke. Graf Reed for three, back rimmed. And a loose ball back in the hands of Salem Hills. De Luke goes outside, goes inside, blocked away by Wistersill, and he's out of bounds. He tried to save that one in. Jack Wistersill, I mean, we talked about how good he is. Five rebounds here in the first half. Wow. <laughs> I think there's a size advantage. Yeah. And you would say Texas Strongs. I talk about moving from the Metroplex. Truthfully, he's from the land of the Lumberjacks. He's got Minnesota blood in him. 10,000 lakes. Well, but the Paul Bunyan Trophy, man. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 And there's a traveling violation. So, a little George Mikan. Is that what you're getting at? George, what? what? Mikan. The Mikan drill. The Do you not know George Mikan of the, the original Minnesota Lakers? You don't know? No. Well, I don't even let know. me tell you a story. I, I, I don't George. even know what sport you're talking about, Dusty. George, you want me to go hockey? Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> Mike Madonna? Hey, that is the sport of Minnesota, I'll have you know. <laughs> Zach Nelson with the lay-in midst our uh, geography lesson here on Game My Life Rewind. Look, when you steal my favorite team, I stop paying attention. <laughs> because of Mighty Ducks. Says Worcester Seal down low. Goes right back at it, and Jack lays it up and in. Oh, I got you now. Okay, I'm <laughs> with you. Oh, there's a steal to Jordy Barnes. Oh, he was going to go a little and one mixtape. Professor may move there. A little slip of the hand on the ball. And as uh, Will Rich will give it back to Jordy Barnes. Rich back up top to Worcester Sill. Dowdell didn't settle for the foul wow. attempt. Wistersill! <laughs> hey, you want some range? There's some range. How about that? I mean, Dusty, that's a 25-footer. <laughs> yeah. With ease. And on the other end, it just would not crawl home. Is so Rich has got to be spent. I'll tell you, Salem Hills is playing hard. I mean, they are trying to keep balls in play. They, they are trying to be physical and... You know, they've done everything they can. To, it's been an A-plus for effort. But, uh, again, the ball just not quite dropping. I mean, free throws, they've missed several of well, them here. I mean, you're seeing the legs here from Rich. I mean, he's gone up and down the floor. Maybe that's a little bit of this. He's just trying to catch his breath as Zach Nelson will come off the floor. And there he is, the second. 
collects himself and knocks it down. 23-15, 3.45 left in the half. And Richards now with six. Wister Sill. Well, it goes right in, that's a charge. Yep. Jack doesn't like it. And he picks up his first personal. I, I thought that was the right call. A painful call if you're Salem Hills. They're wearing blue today. They're, they will wear blue tonight after yeah. that one. That's a, that's a hard take. <laughs> With a little black accent. Yeah. There's a, yeah. We got a thumbs up from our uh, official. Is there's a steal by Barnes. With the left hand, plus one. Spencer Fillmore will pick up the foul. It'll be Jordy Barnes looking for the hard way three. You know, I don't know how Matt Bard, Barnes played. I would imagine very much like Jordy. I love the hand yes. in there, the slice steal. And then this is a difficult finish through the contact three-point play. And I can see Matt, maybe he's still chewing gum then too. Like, yeah, 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 got me. Yep. <laughs> As Richard sends back out to Graffin Reed. Lipped out the triple. And the rebound cleared away by Dowdell. Wistersill again. 4-3. How about the half for Jack Wistersill? Ten points, five boards, an assist. And he's got a couple blocks that aren't on the board yet. Yeah. It's, uh, it's why we say he is a difficult player to deal with because... If you want to take him out of the block, he'll beat you up high. And it's been great. Uh, Barnes with a steal. Here comes Dowdell on the other end. Oh, a little Euro step. Can't quite finish it. This game was 18-12. Transition three. Crawls over the top as I would not drop for Chase to graph and read. And it timeout taken by Salem Hills and We'll take it with him. 2.25 left in the half. It is a 14-point lead for Olympus. You're watching the 5A quarterfinals. Jake said these are awesome for studying. Line, you shouldn't ever take someone else's medication. Know your script. Talk to your kids about the dangers of sharing prescriptions. College wasn't built for me. I didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Or if my kid had a fever. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. I want to take tests when I'm ready. I want to take courses on my time. And speed up when I know my stuff. I want a university that cares about me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. Two twenty-five left in the half. Dusty Litster and Dane Stewart with you all week long. Not just today. We got eight yeah. games today, so this is game two of four for the boys, and we got four girls games coming up later. And right. of course, you know we we want to remind you, sustenance of Rewind brought to you by Taylor Francis. Want to say thanks to <laughs> yes. Taylor for taking care of us today. And I said happy birthday to my oldest daughter Reagan. Today is her tenth birthday. Taylor turned twenty-one yesterday. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, using her birthday to help, man. That's like, that's awesome. And how's that's she, A plus. And we deal with Vince quite a bit. She chose to deal with him. So did we, kind of. But uh, well, we love Taylor. Is on the drive, the lay and walk goal. Hey, let's stick with it, Anthony Olsen. He is the Harrison career of this team. Yeah, he is. On the other end, Nelson with the flyby and then the lay in. Plays very much like him, just physical, never gives up on a play. Doesn't Gotta shoot love. the three like him. Harry was, I mean, was nails from the corner. Yeah. And also a very good pitcher on that Olympus yes. team that went to the state championship game. And playing here at the U, right? That's right. Talked to him last year at the state baseball tournament. Oh, oh. nice find by Jack. You know, <laughs> when he doesn't have all that hair, he can see those <laughs> passing lanes a lot easier. It's... I'll tell it to his brother, JT, because JT's like, I don't know, he shaved his head. And I was like, I'm going to tell him, hey, it's because he, he, he can be like the Joker, man. Pass it by Djokovic. Is, uh, oh, that won't go. He kind of is Utah's Joker. Has that same kind of game? It's just hard to say that. Here's a step into the transition three. 
Just because he plays for the Nuggets. I mean, it's just hard. It's hard. <laughs> Transition. Richard. As the shooting has gone a little cold here from deep. Oh, that's steal. Garrett Scott with an extra possession here for the Skyhawks. Scott hanging on the dribble. Gets it to oh. Richards. <laughs> Hey, one to double one. It doesn't have to be pretty, right? Sometimes you're just in the right spot, and nice job finishing that inside. Hey, it scores all the same, right? Going back to the Joker point, that's what I get for talking about a sport that doesn't exist in my mind, so <laughs> or a league. Yeah, it's like bring back the Sonics, would you? All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> we'll get into the geography of that one. Is there it's <laughs> 20 seconds left? Uh, the more and I. Next year, even with the shot clock, this would be the final possession of the yeah, half. Yeah. So, but no shot clock this year. Oh, nice beautiful bait. back cut. And Dowdell lays it in with seven. Richards. Oh, they won't get it off in time. Nice hustle there by Lowe and Barnes. And the first half comes to a close. And the number one overall seed, Olympus, looking strong in the first half. It is the Titans 35, Skyhawks 19. You're watching the 2022 5A State Tournament on your new home for online championships, kslsports.com. And welcome back inside the Huntsman Center. Dusty Litster, pleased to be joined by Dane Stewart, and now going to be joined by one of our own for a little bit here in uh, JT Wistersill. JT, you got to feel pretty good about our little brother looking in the first half. I was going to say, I mean, give credit where credit is due. You taught him everything he knows in the game of basketball, right? Let's just be honest. I mean, Dane, you have to come shoot with me sometimes. I'm lights out. They call me Curry at the record. Yeah, I, I figured. I figured. So we'll start first with Salem Hills in this third quarter. The Skyhawks couldn't quite get the offense going off from the outside, and everything gets mucked up. Is that, as you see right there, you want to be fast, not quick. And it sped up as Richards leaves it for DeGraff and Reed. Luke sends back out to Richards, chased off the three. A little main range two will not go. Olsen knocked that ball loose, gets it back. And now on the push with Jordy Barnes. Yeah, really like the ball movement on Salem Hills on the three. Jack Wistersill, 4 3, his third. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about 35% coming into the contest from long range. He's shooting above that here in this uh, quarterfinal. It's been a good game for Jack from the outside. Oh, and how about the plus one there by Chase DeGraffenried? Gets inside and draws the foul on Anthony Olsen. A nice fish finish there by Chase. Yeah, it was a great finish by DeGraffenried. Foul on number zero, Yeah. So back on the other end is Jordy Barnes. It'll set up the offense for Coach Barnes. Is Dowdell now outside with Olsen. Going to drop it in to Wistersill. Jack tries to make the extra pass. Does get it to Olsen. He could not get it to go. And now a loose, or probably the foul going to be charged here to Jordy Barnes. Well, three. That is uh, Luke Lowe. You know, JT, obviously, as a, a family member of, of Jack's, that Olympus team last year made that, that run, fell short. How much have you heard he and his teammates talk about wanting to finish it this year and, and not letting an opportunity go to waste? So much. I mean, I think for Jack especially, just to get so close like that. And, of course, Jack feels like we were the better team, even though we didn't win that game. So I think that really stung for him all offseason. He's been working really hard to get back to this moment. And a lot of the guys contributed on last year's team that have been able to step up and give him valuable minutes this year. Richards off the open three, or the pass from Garrett Scott. And the open three is good for Riker Richards. And of course, JT has called games for us all throughout football season. Basketball a little lighter because we want him to be a big brother. Yeah, got you. Is on the drive, plus one. Anthony Olsen. And where the halo really helped there, just to plug one of my favorite things. <laughs> and uh, plus one is Richards maybe cramping up a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, Dusty, I love the uh, association you made earlier, liking him to career, right, back yeah. in the day. The physicality element to his game, the non-give up, and, and I just have been really impressed. We, 
you know, Oli TV does a lot of Olympus games, so we don't get to see them a lot until they come here to the site. But uh, he's been great here early on for Olympus, had, had a strong year. Yeah, you know, Oli TV, we don't mess with that too much during the regular season and home site playoff games. But these are ours as a uh, get close to the state championship, get to the site. Oh, we got all kinds of stuff happening. We got a jump ball. Not going to call any fouls on anybody. And there's a jump ball. Possession belongs to Olympus. It has played well as uh, Worcester Sill jump ball and then back-to-back -back jump balls. The girls' games come later today, so usually we're, we're pretty up on the, not a knock, very up on the dual possession arrow. Boys game, usually not as often as uh, baseline stepped out of bounds. And then we're going to apologize to our scoreboard. We keep, uh, keep getting a little bumped, so we'll try to keep that cropped in there for you all. There's a 15-point lead here for Olympus. And, you know, as I mentioned, JT was still joining us here for a little bit. The brother Jack here at the elbow. Hand off to Dowdell. Couldn't quite get that to go, and that's a loose ball foul. Charles Dutch. So the question is, when Jack was deciding where he was going to school, we know most of the offers were big sky. Papa was just still having pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he school was. I know he wanted to go, to. hey, why are you sending him to whack? He should be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of those coaches, I think once they realized, like, they saw him and they realized, oh, he's they knew the Worcester Sill last name, and they saw that, oh, his son is, can actually play. It's not just a name thing. So I know they were very excited, and I know Idaho was a school, as they know, <laughs> you know look, wanted him very badly. The worst thing about that decision is he's only going to get to play in the ICCU arena, you know, once a year, yeah. as opposed to, you know, 15 or 17. That's that's the real tragedy. But, look, to your point, JT, it's, it has been all earned. We've seen what Jack has done today and over his career. Chase to have a great career in the big sky. Chase to Graffery knocks that down. I don't know the ICCU center is, but the Kibbe don't, right? No. The ICCU arena is a brand new facility. It's beautiful. They got basketball out of the potato shed slash football stadium into a dedicated arena. Things are changing in Moscow, Dusty. Loose ball taken by Zach Nelson. I couldn't help it. I didn't buy it on the Sonics. I couldn't help on that one. Here comes Garrett. Sends back. Oh, nice, oh, nice find inside. inside. And Zach, Zach Nelson, Nelson fouled by Jordy Barnes. And that'll put uh, Zach Nelson on the line for two free throws. I think Salem Hills has done a really good job in this game overall, doubling Jack in the paint. You don't want to send a double to him instantly because yeah. he's a very willing passer and can find the open guy. So if you wait for him to kind of get going, decide he wants to take it up, and you send that late double, I think it's very effective. And we've seen it work out a few times now. Salem Hills has to be pleased with the job they've done in the paint on Wistersville. And as Dane pointed out in the first half, without the wavy hair, he actually sees it faster. Yeah. <laughs> as the free throw is good from, uh, from Zach Nelson. So a 10 point game for Olympus. And that's the thing for Salem Hills. Things have not gone exactly well, but you know in these state tournament games, sooner or later those shots that would not drop, there's gonna be a run of those dropping. Well, I think the other thing, you think about the first half, I mean, even the way Salem Hills started from the line, I think they missed four of their first free throws. It, it just felt like they didn't have their, their legs. They just weren't quite gelling yet. You go that end, you hit free throws, you're getting a stop, like, this is this is a team that it's still 10, right? They're still within striking distance if they can keep getting some of those stops, executing on the offensive end. Still 12 minutes. I know JT made the point at the start of the second half, right? There's a lot of time left there. There's still plenty here for Salem Hills. The ball game's not done. Well, well Uncle Mo is starting to get ready to sneeze. You get that charging foul on Olsen. And a bucket here and another stop. Also, this game gets really interesting. Oh, Richards. Yeah. I thought maybe got a foul call there. I, I thought maybe got away with a no call there. Yeah. The, the double arm move. Yeah. As uh, oh. how about the contested <laughs> shot and finished by Chase to grab the read. And that's five points in the third quarter for Chase. We're still in this thing. And even the student section, you're starting to get a little extra energy coming from the Salem Hills side. Dowdell, nobody home on that pass, and another zero put up on the defensive end for the Skyhawks, and a big momentum bucket opportunity here for Salem Hills. Yeah, playing very poised right now, doing a really strong job, and as you guys mentioned, we can hear that student section, both student sections kind of raising the energy. This is such a great atmosphere. DeGraff and Reed, offensive foul. 
wipe off the foul. It's the Dick Bavetta wipe off of the three offensive foul on the screen. Called on Baker. He had that shoulder come out, and boy, a cost. That would have brought it to five. <laughs> Yes. And up, that didn't even move. It was like Jibber for Dett his last time here at the Huntsman Center. <laughs> Dow a little long on the triple. Mr. Shield. Oh, oh, look at that. Through the legs. Going Gary Payton style. <laughs> Boston Crab save. Here comes the other end. Reverse it and score it. Riker Richards and the run continues. Time out on the floor to Coach Barnes. 3-0-1 left in the third quarter. Here comes Salem Hills. Full time out, we'll take it with them. You're watching the 2022 5A State Tournament. Let's make sure when you rest your arm. Yeah, I'll lean back. So out of the timeout and a six point lead for Olympus, but Salem Hills coming on offensively. Does Blister still give back to Barnes? He's called for the charge. That is four straight empty possessions for Olympus. How about the job by Nelson standing in and drawing that? Man, Salem, they look like a different team. I mean, even, even the last three minutes, right? It wasn't even the start of the second half. It was the last three minutes. This Skyhawk bunch looks like a different group. DeGraff and Reed. He wants that foul callback. It's so Richards. <laughs> and the foul and the charge on Richards. It almost sounded like Dusty slipped up here, but he is sitting down the <laughs> whoop. <laughs> I, our official wasn't, he had his head down. That was, yeah, but Kane was moving. And I don't know what's talking about the moving and planet stuff, but I don't think he was even, yeah, anyway, whatever. It's okay. Love our, our officials. officials. I don't need the guy in the blue shirt in front of me jumping over the top. But uh, but it's McCain that's actually injured and had to walk off the floor. As he comes back into picture. Yeah, I think we had a quick shoe tie there. But this is an interesting spot for this Olympus team because you look at it, the last time a game was this close for them in the third quarter was back in December. Wow. That's when they played that Davis team. Right, the rest Davis, of their teams yeah. haven't been as close during the season. So this is a test for them. And this is, even though they have some guys with that experience, Jordy's still only a sophomore, Dutch is still only a sophomore. So it's an interesting spot for some of these younger guys to be in. Outside, Jordy Barnes. Drop it inside to Jack. Was so left hand crawls off. A little bit of a no look shot there by Jack. Didn't quite get his head around. Tough one to finish in the paint. You see that just crawl off. Luke to Graffenry goes to Nelson in the corner. Zach leaves it. Cross court. Steven Strong. Steven on the drive. Left it too strong and a rebound cleared away by Dowdell. And now a foul going to be charged to Strong. And have your arms up. You can't run up his back as that'll be a foul. And that'll be the 15th foul on the Skyhawks. I think it's a good foul for Salem Hills, though. You have the momentum right now. Don't want to give up the fast break basket. Let's some Olympus get some of that momentum back going. So I think it was a smart foul there. And I think if you're Olympus, you really just want to calm it down right now, try to get it inside. But then if you're Salem Hills, you just want to keep doing what you've been doing. Send that late double and force this team to hit some shots from the outside. They've been able to force a lot of turnovers in this third quarter, Dusty. Yeah, over five possessions without a bucket here for the Titans. Some turnovers and fouls. Low passes up the three, give it back to Dowdell. There's a foul on the drive. 
That'll be the 16th foul. And how about this? We didn't have a single bonus penalty free throw taken in game one. And we will shoot the entire, well, the remainder of the third and all of the fourth quarter here. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of moments, I thought, in that first half where they were letting the teams play. Yeah. So it's an interesting contrast we've gotten in this second now. Drop it inside of Wistersill. Jack gets around, got the hook. Yeah. Not saying he did, but you can see the arm come through. Looks like he kind of went flat arm. We'll have a another look at it here. A tough one on the day. But a minute and a half left and big, big moments of this one. Two possession game to go by threes. And Salem Hills has been hanging around and trying to claw back into this thing. Trail by double digits in this one. That was what, 15 at the half? Is we got a foul, yeah, they could have called that for the last 20 seconds or so. And gave him a chance to clean it back up. That foul be called on McCain. And how about this? One on one free throws. Yeah, it was 35 19 at the break. It was 16. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about that? Sorry, 15 to, 15 to 5? Yeah. And I think one of the biggest reasons they've been able to go on this run is Anthony Olsen isn't in the game right now because of that foul trouble. Olsen, as I kind of highlighted earlier, just one of the more underrated players on this team. Him and another guy in Luke Lowe on Olympus are really the dirty work guys that do so much for them defensively. This is an Olympus team that only runs seven deep, and guys like Olsen play a ton of minutes, so I think they're really missing his presence and physicality out there right now as he generates so many second chance possessions, especially on the offensive end. Richards goes one of two from the stripe in a five-point game. As Olympus again looking for that offense. As it's low, goes inside to Wistersill. Jack goes base. Wistersill powers back up, can't get it, gets his own board. Fouled by Richards, and it'll be Wistersill going to the line for two free throws. As the board and bucket opportunity wasn't there, but he'll go to the line for two. And I love the aggressiveness there of, of Jack, right? Hey, look, this is, this is fine. Uh, th we're done, right? Like like the senior, JT, you talked about, you know, the heartbreak last year, not wanting that to end. And, I mean, that possession's like, we're, we're stopping this. He attacks it, offensive board, and then a missed free throw. It's just like, it, it's, it's right there, and Olympus just hasn't been able to take advantage of the opportunities here in the third. Mm -hmm. And I think you saw the frustrations for Jack there. I mean, he exploded up instantly as soon as he missed that shot and was not going to let anyone get in the way between him and the ball for that rebound. And it goes one of two from the stripe and back to a six-point advantage. As we go inside of one minute left in the third quarter. Salem Hills has been sitting around looking for an opportunity to get this down to one possession. Three down the barrel. Won't go on the rebound. Then yeah, knocked out of bounds by Garrett, and it'll be Olympus basketball. Garrett Scott nearly came away with that. I don't know what was said at halftime, but I just love the way this Salem Hills team came out in this third quarter. They have been the aggressors. They have played to win versus in stretches. I feel like Olympus has played not to lose at times, not always hitting open men and passing up a few open shots, as well as turning the ball over multiple times. So all the credit in the world to this Salem Hills team for the way they've came and attacked this third quarter. Final 35 seconds of the third quarter. Jordy works it up top again. No shot clock. Last time we're going to be saying that in the state tournament, but not egregiously done here by Coach Barnes. He doesn't do it very often. It's around 40 seconds. I was going to say rare. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not common that you it's see. Like when Quincy Lewis does it. McCain passes up the three, 10 seconds. Jordy on the drive. Try to set back out. Tipped around. Worcester still wins it. Three. Hoist it up. Front of the iron. This will count if it goes. And Dowdell can't hit it. End of the third. JT, man, thanks for joining us in the third. Go enjoy the fourth quarter. Go cheer your big your little bro on. Will do. Appreciate it, guys. Best in the business. Yeah. JT was still one of our members, members of our team here at Game Night Live Rewind. As we head to the fourth quarter, Olympus 41, Salem Mills 35. You're watching the 5 A's quarterfinals on Game Night Live Rewind. Start of the fourth quarter, Dusty Litzer and Dane Stewart with you. Six-point lead for Olympus. And, Dane, the offense for Olympus is done. Absolutely silent. No field goals. I think in the last six minutes of that third quarter, that unofficially? That's probably about right. And, I mean, even the percentage from the line has not been great in those last six minutes. It uh, only scored six points in that third, and that's well below the pace that Olympus has played at all year long. Well, they only scored six points in the quarter. Yeah. And three of those came off of Worcester Sill three, and then some free throws. Is Jack going to go back to work? 
Goes that short corner pass because of the good defense there by Salem Hills and, and, and Baker. It's even one of those where, I mean, even Jack, that's a shot that he's taken a lot this year, and he's passing the ball, right? I mean, who's going to stand up and be that guy to help deliver Olympus through this? Oh, how about that? Baker closed go. that gap and wishes he finishes through the contact. Yeah, and, and again, he's never going to shy from contact. I think it's about getting him the right, comfortable shot. And we, we said the one he kind of passed off, and that time, love that he's, no, hey, I, I am going to be the guy and able to get that shot to go. Nice find inside, and DeGraffery blocked away by Wistersill. Well, that extra dribble kind of led him right into Jack, and uh, that's a nice block there by Wistersill inside. Yeah, normally you want to go that reverse side right on the shot blocker, but he went right into him. As Wistersill goes back to work, Baker left his feet. Wistersill stayed patient and scores. The Lumberjack just chopping him down, Dusty. <laughs> and a timeout on the floor. 10-point lead once again for Olympus. 30-second timeout. We'll stay here. Remind you that uh, this is game two of eight on the day. We'll have the Olympus girls later today. A chance to see Alyssa Blank taking on the reigning 5A champion, Salem, or pardon me, Springville Red Devils. Yeah. Should be a good one. A, a matchup that we saw in the regular season. Springville got the better of Olympus that night. And... Uh, if I recall, didn't they play in the semis last year as well? I'm trying to remember. I know it was a playoff matchup. I, I might have been in quarterfinals. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, can't, I remember. can't remember. Yeah. But um, look, it's going to be strength on strength, right? Alyssa Blank and company, the future BYU Cougar. And, uh, crazy to see her career come to an end. Dusty, over 1,500 points in her career. And she's over 90% from the line this year, Alyssa Blank is. I think that's good for like top five in the country. It's it's been a phenomenal year for her, a phenomenal career, and for Olympus fans, hoping that it doesn't end today. So again, game two of eight. We got four boys games to start today, then four girls games in the afternoon. There's Graf and Reed on the drive, the foul, the Worcester still plus one. Nice take and finish to chase the Graf and Reed. That'll be the third personal foul on Jack Worcester still. Yeah, Jack kind of riding him a little bit there. And look, I, I love the recognition of, hey, if I've got a position, I'm going to attack the rim and try to get the bucket. It's a heck of a job. Well, he's been chasing those three points that got wiped off on the offensive foul, and he just got them back. Remember that foul would have made it a two-point game, I think it was at the time. Yeah. So here comes Olympus. Found a little bit of magic offensively going right here into the post. Wistersill sent it back out. Barnes. Oh, the three was partway down and out. Rebound to Richards. Rebound back to Nelson. Here, Baker. Garrett Scott. Terminates. Sent back out to DeGraff and Reed. Chase cut off by great defense there by Low. Luke Lowe. Look out. Oh, uh, misses the three. Dowdell had it for just a moment. Nelson comes away with the rebound. Zach Nelson blows by Barnes. Gets Wistersu off his feet. Plus one. And more importantly, maybe the fourth personal foul on Jack Wistersill as Zach Nelson will go the line. I love the patience here by Nelson. You can see Jack was sizing that up. You get a little pump fake. Jack bites on it. And I love going right into that for the contact. And Jack staying on here with the four, Dusty. Let's yeah, see how much they can give him and see if it affects him going down the block as well. Because you imagine Baker's going to be hitting the deck trying to pick up number five. My pick went down this morning. <laughs> Dusty's <laughs> hanging on right now. Because, and mine now, too. Dane warned everybody. <laughs> <laughs> with the finish, great finish by Wistersill. And it's 20 points leading all scores. To Graffery, cross court Nelson. Zach sends back out, stolen away by Lowe. I, I, I think a good no call. I was going to say the same thing. That was a good no call there, not to, not to blow the whistle on that play. Got to allow him to come down. This wish still goes inside to Olsen. He's playing with fouls as well. And yeah, so's Jordy. He's got three as well. Wish still with Baker. Back out, Jordy Barnes. I mean, you even see Jack on that play not attack as physically, knowing he's got the four. Which still gets inside and again, puts it up and in. Get what you can out of the big fella. 
I mean, you stay fit, strong, you stay vertical. At some point, right, what else do you do? Well, all the years we've covered Olympus is 2005. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, the post players. Crosby Styles was a junction jumper, but where Matt Barnes had, hey, ah, four out, lob it inside the big men. Well, and because even even Creer and Jones were not a Worcester sill, right? Right. Like, Too strong there from Garrett Scott and the board into the hands of Dowdell. And again, I think you might, was Dowdell with the blow by. Ooh. Hangs on a pivot outside Wistersill. The third, the fourth quarter is Jack Wistersill's. Are you not entertained? Goes a little Maximus after knocking down the three. 3.39 left in the fourth. It's all Wistersill. You're watching a 2022 5A state tournament. <laughs> Ouch. Gonna need some pills for that one. Hey! Prescription pain pills can be dangerous. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy there. You're her parent, not a drill sergeant. More love than they'll listen. Know your script. Talk to your kids about prescriptions the right way. Welcome back in the fourth quarter. Dusty Lister and Dane Stewart with you. It was 45 to 41. And then big number 15 happened. He picked up his fourth personal foul and since then, yeah. Dane, gone to work. That's why I asked the question to his brother JT, right? How, how much of a focus has it been knowing they you know, ended up short last year? And it, he has dialed in here in this fourth quarter. How about Richards? That's his 17th point. He'll go to the line looking for number 18, and that's number four on Anthony Olsen. So. And, and if this game were to tighten up, yeah. You could... I mean, here's the thing, right? It's at work this last week. I made a presentation. I likened it to Rocky IV, <laughs> and it's kind of like Rocky IV here, right? These are ab blows, ab blows, ab blows, with the hope that you're able to get Olsen or Wistersill to foul out in these final 332 and open things up a little bit. Hey, if you're not talking to your team, saying no pain, no pain. Yeah. Yeah. There's no throwing the towel in this match. No. <laughs> this is a family program, so we had to modify the line a little bit. This is turned into a street fight. 52-44. <laughs> Outside uh, with Olsen. And I had to grab it gave that one away. As it'll be one-on-one -on -one free throws here for Olsen. How about this? This is this is astonishing, at least in my mind. Do you remember the three-point percentage for Olympus that I shared? 41. You want to know what they shoot as a team from the free throw line? 86. 65. Whoa. Right. Normally, good three-point shooting teams are good at the line. According to stats reported, I don't want to, you know, according to stats reported, 65% as a team. Lower than I would have thought. That's surprising. Maybe because they don't get that many. Is That could... Well, but it's percentage. Right, that's true, right? Yeah. 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 Well, I was saying lower the number, the they easier have, it is to have a lower percentage. Uh, ironically enough, uh, they have taken twice the number of threes as free throws. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Analytics. Here's the graph read. Tried to pick up number four on Worcester Seal. Didn't get the call. Look, I don't, five, pardon me. I don't think many would argue with you. You score more from beyond the arc than at the line, Dusty. Yeah, I, absolutely. And now the foul given away to Chase to Graffin Reed. We'll put Dowdell at the line. And it's now a double bonus. Oh, they were quick to the trigger there. So last one on one free throw. How about one more thing? Think about how close this game has been, the surge of Salem Hills mm -hmm. in the second half. Olympus has four timeouts left. Yeah, Matt just. Go Super play. Calm. It's okay. Go play. Yeah. He's going to chew his uh, spearmint gum and figure it out. Is that Which ball, is, is that the mint of choice, by the way. <laughs> it's a real mint. As uh, that ball is out of bounds, and it'll stay here with Olympus. 
as all the things were going right for, for Salem Hills late in that third quarter. Yeah. That ball bounces that way for a while. And it stopped partway through the fourth. Well, I think the hard thing is, is you saw Olympus miss shots. You saw some turnovers in the third. And, and really, you know, Jack's ability to step up and just kind of take it over and execute down the stretch has been a big differentiator. And double Dutch Dowdell put that one on the yo-yo and gets to the rim as Richard's going to drive at Olsen. And Olsen just wow. takes it away. How about that snipe, uh, even with playing with four fouls? Right. And now the first timeout taken here by Matt Barnes. 2.24 left in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back. Final moments of the fourth quarter, Olympus leading by 12. The winner will move on to take on Bonneville, who won an absolute thriller against Alta to kick off the morning. And then we'll go to the right side of the bracket. Orm coming up next. Yeah, Orm and Woods Cross should be a fun, fun battle. Hey. Woods Cross got, they've got some youngsters. And Dane's undefeated. They're undefeated with Dane yeah. on the call. Yeah, yeah. That's why Dane... If you watched our 5-8 Bracketology, and now it'll be a double bonus for Luke Lowe. Yeah, I, uh, you know, tradition. <laughs> but, uh, of course, I didn't make our, our producer all the, the more happy about it. I know I created a few <laughs> extra hours of work for him. But I uh, do want to thank him for, you know, letting me have that latitude. Me. He doesn't even like the thank you. It's just an eye roll. It's like, I, I just, I can't win. I did it to him in the 6A. <laughs> That's why we gave him an intern. That's what Preston's there for. <laughs> That's the free throw. <laughs> he goes one of two, and it's a 13-point lead. As Salem Hills clinging to some hope here. Slims out the doors. They're going to go inside to Richards. Good backside contest there by Lowe. Yep. Barnes trapped in the backcourt. Somehow found enough mustard to get that off to Dowdell. <laughs> you think Dutch Dowdell learned how to keep the ball from his older brothers? Yeah. That's how fast his hands were. I mean, that's a youngster that got harassed by his older brothers that would not just let him win. Can you imagine that backyard basketball? Like, like so, you know, I have no idea the family situation, but you got a basketball <laughs> court somewhere, and you're going to have like a two inch depression in the concrete around the three point line, <laughs> and everything inside the paint is going to be this crisp and pristine, yeah. just perfectly finished. <laughs> Did you guys ever play basketball? <laughs> yeah. Where it's meant to be played, all the way out here. Uh, <clears throat> As Jordy knocks down the free throws. 15-point lead at the minute and a half left to Graffenreed. Oh, and the foul going to be the loop to Graffenreed. And we'll march all the way down to the other end of the floor. Salem Hill's going to go some wholesale changes, get the seniors off the floor and give them a little clap off here. It's a great year for Salem Hill's. They were 9-7 and seven in non-region play. We talked about, you know, tough start. Saw them at Sky Ridge had some games that didn't go their way there. You talk about the region opening loss and then a team that really found its footing and uh, made this impressive run. It's region nine champs in what was a, a tight region this year, tough region with Springville and always a, a gritty group there. Wasatch has some young talent there. Spanish Fork won a lot of games this year. And, uh, you know, I think they put a lot of scare in Olympus, but this is a, a veteran team with a lot of experience. They got some youngsters, but they've had disappointment in the past and, you know, just the resolve to not let it happen again here in the quarters. Well, how about this? Olympus was held to six points in the third quarter. Yeah. It was 45-41. Since that point, 15-3. to three. 
They just added one, 16 to three, so. Late to the trigger. 16 <laughs> to three. Yeah. Yeah. That's a championship mentality. Richards has played his tail off today, misses the first. And I think what's even more surprising, remember, Wistrow picked up his fourth person foul. I think it was like five, three and a half. Three, yeah. three and a half. A three and a half. But, or no, maybe it was it longer. Was and Olsen was yeah. at five, or at three and a half yep. when he got his fourth. Because remember, we met Remark yeah. that yep. Barnes stayed yep. with him. So 16 point lead and Olympus is gonna move on to take on Bonneville. And uh, a game that, hey, I'm not gonna doubt the Lakers. I'm done, yep. yep. I, I, I thought the matchup inside wouldn't favor Bonneville and it did the entirety of the way. And you know, you look at this game, is there a player that can deal with the physicality of Worcester Sill? And I think what we saw today is Bonneville's not gonna back down. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, and, and now that is what still have to stay in front of Jones. They get you matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Who knows they shoot the three the way that the Dixons did today. I'm mean, a good grief. Coy Brown was, oh my heavens. I did it again. <laughs> Dixon. Coy Dixon. <laughs> Hit yeah. three threes in the first, four threes in the third, pacing the way. Yeah, uh, it, it'll be an interesting game and you know, Starters off the floor here for Olympus. They get a well-earned applause, but uh, and Bonneville defensively, look, they're they're not going to give up a lot of open shots. I mean, they did a pretty good job today defensively on out. I'd expect Coach Bullinger to have that defense ready to go against this Olympus squad, and I think that's a heck of a semifinal. Should be fun. Absolutely, is Will Rich going to hand back to Zach Albert and uh, the foul from Salem Hills, Seth Messervy. And a free throw good. And so for those of you looking for the Orem Woods Cross game, that'll be coming up next. Second one is short. And Olympus will have the ball back with just over 45 seconds left. And then the foul gave it up once again by Maservi, and it will be free throws again for Salem Hills. Can I tell you, we've had two outstanding student sections today. Not to say that Salem Hills isn't, that Bonneville wasn't, but man, Alta really brought it. We knew Olympus would bring it. Yeah. Which is, as you say, tradition. This uh, student section always shows up. And then Orem and Woods Cross got something to live up to. One of the two of them. So Strong sends out. They're going to work it around. And this is Maservi lost that off his foot. And we'll go back to Olympus. And the run for Coach Barnes. I mean, there's been a lot of years. I was talking with some coaches this weekend and said, hey, how many times has Olympus gone into the state tournament with the best team? And it, it's happened quite often. But the last few years, you got that first championship. They had the heartbreak the next year. But they've come back with so many times. And uh, this is a program that is as constant as the North Star, Dane, is in that classification. Yeah, I mean, it's just remarkable. When you consider they've lost one game this year, and that was against the Davis Darts, and when they gave up an 18-8 fourth quarter, they should have won that game. This Olympus team really probably should be undefeated. I was talking with the coach who said, they're the best team in the state, is Olympus. I said, I've seen Bingham. I've seen Davis. This is before Davis lost. He thought Olympus was the best team in the state. They flex that muscle here today. They certainly do, and it's Olympus with a 63-45 win over, or over Salem Hills. And to Salem Hills, congratulations on what was an outstanding year. They mentioned earlier, started nine, the year 9-7, and seven, went 9-1 and one in region play. But they fall short today against Olympus. Dane, your selection of a Heidemann Associates player of the game. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Jack Wistersill. I think the way that he took over late in the contest, uh, especially playing with the four personal fouls, I thought he was great today, we expected that. Knew that he had range, did not expect him to have NBA plus type range, right? I mean, how many 25 foot did he hit in that first half? Jack Wistersill's my player of the game. Yeah, an outstanding game, and congratulations to Coach Barnes. Another win, they're gonna go on to take on Bonneville. We'll have that game right here on Wednesday as you get a look at the road to Provo as Bonneville and Olympus will match up in the semifinals on 
Wednesday evening. We'll yeah. have that game for you right here on kslsports.com. But again, our final score goes in favor of Olympus and our high of social player of the game, Jack Wistersill, with a spectacular second half taking down away. For Vince Francis and Dane Stewart, I'm Dusty Lister. Thanks for joining us and for watching the 2022 5A State Tournament right here on kslsports.com. Game three on the way, Orem and Woodscross right here on kslsports.com.